you might be wondering why I'm wearing blue lipstick. Um, to be honest with you, because I just felt like it. <laughs> I was cleaning up my closet. I was cleaning up my makeup thingy and I found all these MAC lipsticks because I used to be obsessed with colored lipstick and this blue one was just like calling my name. I think it looks really good. Anyway. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Pretty Bookish channel where we talk all things books all the time. Um, I am back, new video, new hair, new lip color, new everything, new books because we're about to do my November, not November, lies, December possibility pile, um, which has quite a few new books that I actually just got. I'll do a whole video for you guys uh, soon because I actually just got a whole chunk of new books. But yeah, December possibility. I'm looking forward to this particular month more than any of the other months in terms of my possibility pile because I think with December, like work is starting to like, um, what's the, things are starting to slow down a little bit after like the 15th. So there's quite a, quite a lot of time to read. I think more like just like straight shot during the day. And also because we have quite a few public holidays in December because of obviously Christmas and Boxing Day and New Year's and all that stuff. There's quite a few days that I have just to dedicate to reading. Cause what I typically find that during the, during the work week, during like normal time, I don't read fantasy during the week um, and so the number of fantasy books that I get through in a month is less than maybe like other kind of genres because I don't read fantasy during the week because I find it difficult for my brain to like jump into that space I mean I think maybe YA fantasy um, like I could read like the Red Scrolls of Magic or I could read like I don't know like light fantasy but I wouldn't be able to read like a Reaper and the Gates in the middle of the week so but because we have a lot of public holidays now I think I have a lot more time so I've actually like kind of my possibility pile has quite a few uh fantasy books that I've been really really wanting to get to um and I hope that this will be like a perfect opportunity but I think this generally genre wise it's really wide a wide variety of books so okay we're gonna get into this I just wanted to remind you quickly if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please subscribe below please like this video and comment if you have any questions or if you like any of these books or it just generally anything you want to chat about just pop it in the comments um do my best to respond to my comments um okay so let's get started run you guys through there's quite a few books to get through which is just generally what we do here <laughs> if you just like if you're new there's just quite a few books to get through um because my possibility pile is just generally what i'm thinking about what i'm looking at what on my shelf some of them are books that I actually do need to read because I got sent by publishers and I just kind of feel bad that I haven't read them yet. But others are books that I've just, like, my soul is saying that now is the time. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so speaking about my soul feeling like now is the time for something, the first book on my possibility pile is something that came out, I think, like, three months ago. It has been a bookstagram fave. Everybody has been so obsessed with this book and that's part of the reason why I haven't read it yet because I just didn't want the hype to influence me and to kind of alter my opinion of the book. Sorry, like my nail is broken and that's just, anyway. <laughs> The first book is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I'll probably be reading this the first week of December because I actually, this was my book club selection for November, but we're only meeting midway through December because we picked our book late and we're just kind of, it's just one of those like, our, our book club is not like that rigid um, because of COVID and everything. Meeting up is a bit of a situation. So we're just trying to take it one day at a time. So this we're meeting up in about two weeks to talk about, I think like the weekend of the 13th. So I really want to get through this before that. So The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, um, I finally know what it's about guys. It's about two sisters. Both of them are light-skinned, they're twins. And one of them marries a black man and the other one marries, I think, like a light-skinned black man or a white man. And it's this question of colorism and passing and community and identity, etc. I just told you that whole synopsis, like someone didn't have to tell me because the last time I spoke about this book on this channel, I was told, my synopsis, it was clear I have never read the back of this book. I still haven't, but I got the gist of it from somebody. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, The Vanishing Half, definitely going to read it this month because I actually have to read it. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I've heard mostly good things. I've heard a couple of people say that it's not worth the hype, which is what I was worried about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best to go into it with as much of a... Um, a blank slate as I can because I don't want to hate it because it doesn't live up to expectations but I also don't want to just like force myself to love it um if you've already seen my um 
you'll see my wrap-up video that I'll probably post in the next day or two. That's what happened with The Conjure Women, which I just, I really thought I was going to love, but like I ended up not loving and it was really upsetting. So, um, anyway, The Vanishing Half is the first thing and that's like more, uh, have to read than like necessarily a possibility pile. Sorry, let me move my cart so it's like easier for me to put books on it. Okay. And then the next book that I'm going to probably read is Joburg Noir uh, by Nick Mshongo. It's a short story collection. Nick Mshongo is a South African um, writer and it's a short story collection um, set in Johannesburg, I'm assuming, and different stories uh, centered around the city. What I think I'm going to do with this, because I got sent this by Jakana and I really actually just want to read it, is that I'm going to just set this in December for one story a day. And then by halfway through, because I don't think there's that many stories. Let me see. How many are there? There are, I think about, what I'm seeing is about 20 stories. So I should be done, like, relatively quickly if I read this, like, one story a day. So, Joe Bogno, Joe definitely, probably... I don't want to say definitely because that would be a lie, but probably going to read it. Okay, the next book that I'm thinking of reading that's on my possibility pile for the month is Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendes. So I got gifted this book last month and I was, yeah, December, no, November, and I'm so happy. Like, first of all, can we just talk, take a second for the cover because it's gorgeous. And I think I've spoken about this book before. I posted on my Instagram and I was, I started it and then for some reason my brain just was not connecting and I think it was because I was just having like a bit of reading fatigue when I tried to read this book. So I said even on Instagram that I'm going to wait until I have like maybe a public holiday or a full weekend where I'm home alone, where my family maybe has gone back to Eastern Cape or it's not so hectic at work because right now it's 16 days of activism um, against gender-based violence and so it's really hectic at work and it's been hectic up until the lead up. So what I'm trying to do is wait until I have a second to breathe so that I can read this book because I really feel like it's one of those books that you really want to absorb. I think from what I've heard of people's description is that it's really, the language is very descriptive and Paul Mendes just like really did a really good job of writing this book. So you just want to maybe give it a second. You don't want to like try and rush through it. Um, and, and that's just the thing, right, with reading is that like certain genres, certain books, certain writing styles you can enjoy the book even when you're busy with other things because it takes your mind off things. But when a book like is apparently as descriptive as this and it's just also emotional, emotionally jarring, you want to maybe wait until you have a second because you don't want to either get annoyed with it because it's like giving you anxiety or not be able to fully appreciate the story. So Rainbow Milk, I think I'm going to wait until... but I. This one I'm definitely... I'm not going to say probably definitely. I'm definitely reading this in December because I actually have been wanting to read it for so long and I'm so glad I finally have it. The next book, ah, I actually just like peeped when I got so excited. The next book, I got gifted this by One World Publishers and when I tell you, I was like, like, I was like, oh, ah, I was so happy when this book arrived. It's The First Woman by Jennifer Nansubuga Makumbi. Um, the reason why I'm so excited about this book is because first of all, I, I, I love Jennifer like as a person. I had the pleasure of meeting her last year and I think she's just so funny and she's so cool. Um, also, I have a weird relationship with Jennifer's writing because her first book, Chintu, that African bookstagram loves, I didn't really like it that much. I just, I wasn't that into it. And then her second short story collection, Manchester Happened, I really enjoyed. Um, and so this is another full length novel and I've been waiting for her to write another full length novel for me to see, because I really want to love this book and I and I already love her short story style. So I'm looking forward to reading this book. Um, I, and this is not even a joke. I have no idea what it's about. I don't know what this book is about at all. I read the title. I When I say I don't know, I mean I don't even have a general idea of what the plot point is for this book because it didn't even matter. I've said this before. There are certain writers who at that point, I don't even care like what the book is about. I'm going to get your book and I'm going to read it. Jennifer is on that list simply because I really have been wanting to give her her novel, her novel books or like her long form book what am I trying to say I've been trying to give her long books another chance uh, because I loved her short stories but I'm not sure what it's about so I mean we'll see I mean someone if you guys know you can definitely tell me uh but it doesn't really matter I'll probably read the synopsis before I start reading the book but before then 
please don't ask me I beg because I don't know um so first woman on the possibility pile okay so sorry I just need to oh guys braids wow <laughs> then the next book that I am going to read is one of the fantasy selections the like YA fantasy is a curse so dark and lonely by Bridget Kimmerer from my understanding this is kind of like a reimagining of Beauty and the Beast um yeah it's a it's a creative reimagining of Beauty and the Beast I personally like Beauty and the Beast it's not my favorite of the fairy tales uh I'm hashtag team Snow White but I think that this is going to be really interesting I love reimaginings although I didn't really like um what's it called Cinderella's Dead sorry but I like the concept when I do my review of that book you'll see but I really liked the concept it just wasn't executed properly so i'm really excited plus a lot of people like this book also what i like about bridget camera is that this is part of a series of reimaginings of fairy tales i think the second one and the third one are already out so i really want to read this one and see what i think um so yeah as you guys can see i did say that i wasn't sure if i was going to keep this cover when i um did it on instagram i've just decided to keep it because um to be honest with you i can't be i can't be asked to like go through the effort of trying to find the other cover i'll just keep them if i happen to stumble across the other cover that i like i'll just get that one and then just like give away this copy but like right now where i'm at i just have a lot going on i just can't be hunting for a cover because it's just not that serious at the moment if i end up loving this book though like if i end up loving it then i will make the effort because i'm not gonna want to keep this cover if i end up loving the book but anyway a curse so dark and lonely the cover is not ugly it's just that this is the problem by the way for people who don't follow me on instagram i don't like the silver spine i wanted the spine that's blue like the rest of the cover because i just this is just going to be so aggressive on my shelf it's going to stick out so much which i some of you probably don't care about but it matters to me <laughs> um okay so the next book oh this is another one where the cover is phenomenal it's top like please look at that the betrayals by bridget collins like bridget collins whoever worked like look at that spine and what i love about bridget collins's books because i have the binding uh is that they match but it's not a series like this book has nothing to do with the other book that she wrote but their covers match so on the shelf the spine of the the the, um, the binding is exactly like this and then the cover is almost like this the only difference is that i think it's like purple and it's like it's got a different detail on it but i love that where i write it because now bridget collins when i put my books on the shelf of hers they're all gonna look so good um yeah so i'm really excited to read this also this is on script i found this audiobook on script so i'm that's making me really happy because I'm going to switch between the two of them. Um, this, this is the kind of, Bridget, from what I saw of The Binding, uh, Bridget Collins um, is the kind of writer whose work would probably translate well to audio. So we'll see. Um, also, I kind of want to listen to an audio so that I don't bend the spine because I didn't have that problem with my copy of The Binding because my copy of The Binding is in hardback, but I'm worried about bending the spine. But anyway, that's not important. The important thing is that this is on the possibility part and I might probably definitely maybe might read this <laughs> um so yeah that's the betrayals then next up we have <sighs> i finally have alpha night by nalini singh which is the next book in the side changing trinity novel series i have all of her books every single one of the side changeling and the guild hunter books and Arch archangel's son just came out like like I think a few days ago I'm just waiting for the British cover to come out so that I can order it so it matches the rest of mine but um Nalini Singh is for me like my she's literally my favorite fantasy writer um so this is book I think four in this version of the series the side change to the original series I think had about 12 13 books and then guilt hunter i think also has about 11 12 books at this point so this is the next book in the series i'm excited to read it um yeah and the cover is beautiful by the way i got this book from exclusive books first in um tray paperback came home put it on my shelf two days later i took it back and i returned it because i was just like no no i would rather pay the extra money to get it shipped in and hardback to match the rest of the hardbacks i'm not gonna do this i was just like i'm not gonna do this <laughs> like because it's gonna call, it's gonna drive me mad if i'm sitting with books that are all in hardback except for the one no it's gonna drive me mad anyway i'm really excited to read this as well 
Okay, so the next book that I have is um, Black Sunday by Tola Rotimi Abraham. So this is an African lit book. It is about two sisters, two twin sisters, I think. They're twins, right? Yeah, two twin sisters, Bibike and Arike. By the way, I did actually read the synopsis of this book. Um, so basically, their mom loses their job in Lagos because of political strife in like 96. And then their dad gambles away their house. So they end up having to go live with their grandmother. And then... These twins have like been inseparable before that and then afterwards because of the new household and the new family dynamics and all you know how family drama be their kind of paths start to di diverge and they take different paths in life and I think the book follows both of those sisters and I think it's a shifting narrative book where, or a dual narrative where both of the sisters narrate different parts of it so I'm really really excited about this one. I've heard such great things. Everyone on African Lit Bookstagram really really likes this book said that was really good i've never read tola ratimi abraham before so i really excited to start this writer and to see what she's all about the story also sounds like right up my alley i loved your narrative books i think they just give a roundness to a character it's also not that long um so yeah that's black sunday also the cover is phenomenal it's much better than the one you guys got um in other parts of the world this one is beautiful um okay this is like gonna topple over very soon hopefully not like on me um okay the next book that's on my possibility pile is the trouble of hating you by sajani patel it's just a romance i think it's like an indian it's an enemy to lovers um indian romance it's just on my possibility pile and it probably will be read because it's going to be one of those books that I read in between some of these like more heavy books just to give myself a break. And also I love reading romance on like um, days when I'm feeling like really anxious or when I'm feeling like stressed out. So yeah, I probably will read this. Also, I really like the cover of this book. Also, don't know anything other than the fact that they're enemies to lovers because it says these two are so not in love which i'm assuming is because that's enemies to lovers i have no idea what it's about either um but you guys know that's just my mo at this point okay this is gonna topple over no i'm gonna stop putting these on the floor because that's gonna fall and then i'm gonna die um okay and then the next book on my possibility pile is the lovely war by julie berry okay so i saw this book on Haley's uh book to you I'm a huge fan of Haley's Booktube and Naya. Like, I watch both of them and I really like all their stuff. I saw this on Haley's Booktube. I literally bought this book because I read Greek mythology. Like, this book has elements of Greek mythology because the, the I think it's Aphrodite. Yeah, Aphrodite. It's kind of, you know, that, you know, books that kind of meld Greek mythology with, with modern, uh, characters, with, like situations. I think in this book, it's like set in World War II. Is it World War Two? Yeah. It's after some kind of war. Yeah. It's after some <laughs> it's after some kind of war. It's either World War One or World War Two, but then elements of the Greek of the Greek gods and Mount Olympus kind of infiltrate like human life. And I like those kinds of narratives because it's always interesting to see like the gods meddling with people. But I just anything that has like links to Greek mythology, I like. Also, um, I really like this cover. Also, it's a love story. So I'm really excited. Also, it's contemporary fiction or, and it's not my typical kind of romance. It's also not the typical kind of book that I read. So when I saw it on Haley's page, I just thought, oh, this sounds really good. And I gravitated towards it. And it's just one of those things where it's the kind of book that I want to read just to, you know, just to expand my horizons in terms of the kinds of writers and the writers that I read and the kind of books that I read. So The Lovely War will give that a whirl probably oh next is a book that i actually just got and i'm very excited about it and that is illuminae by amy kaufman and jay christoph i've heard such great things about this book from a lot of people but a lot of people also said that they didn't like it so i was trying to figure out why so apparently it's because the format of this book is not your typical book format because it's basically like a story that's told so the book is basically told through classified documents and like emails and letters and things that are redacted so it's almost like a puzzle piece type of thing and i think it's because of the nature of the story um so it's basically i think it's set in space it's like a sci-fi book and because of the nature of the story it's set and i'm interested to see how amy kaufman and them do it i don't know if you can see 
because it's not a straight narrative. So I'm interested to see if this is going to be difficult for me to read. I don't like to be confused, but I don't mind something a little bit interesting, a little bit off the beaten path in terms of narrative style, but this better not be confusing. I am not, uh, someone just said to me, just someone just said, I just saw a video of someone saying like, I am not a child. I'm not in kindergarten. I don't need to, to do a puzzle. Like, I don't need to, like, fill in the gaps. No, I don't want to be confused for no reason. But if this is, like, if the story delivers what I think it will deliver in the format that it's delivered, I'm really excited to read this. And then I'll get the other two books, Obsidio and Gemini. Although, to be honest with you, sci-fi, not my favorite thing. It's not my favorite thing. I don't particularly like sci-fi. I'm a fantasy girl all the way. But I'm going to give it a chance because... Why not? And I've seen it all over Bookstagram. Um, okay, the next one, also another Bookstagram fave that I just got. Finally got Nevernight. <sighs> the thing is, the re only reason why I want to read Nevernight is because I just need to know if I like the series or not. If I should be, if I should be paying attention to Jay Kristoff at all. By the way, he co-wrote Illumina as well. I just need to know because at this point, so many of my favorite bookstagrammers and so many of the people I've, I'm friends with on bookstagram really like this book. I just need to know. It's the same reason why I read um, A Darker Shade of Magic um, in November. I just need to know um, because if it sucks, I just need to know that it's not my vibe. And if I love it, then fantastic. I have another series that I like. So yeah, I'm looking forward to Nevernight. Also, this cover is so much better than the other one. The other one looks very scary. It's just, no, it's not a vibe, the other one. Okay, we're almost done. The next one that I'm thinking of reading, I also just got, is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. It's queer YA. Um, Tristan, um, whose handle is at Book of Tris, recommended this to me. I read the back of it, and I was just like, hmm. I also just love queer YA it just makes my heart so happy because we didn't have that kind of YA when I was coming up and I'm so glad that there's this huge dearth and this kind of whole um what's the word I'm looking for this whole body of literature for queer young adults to like read and like familiarize themselves with and find and recognize and find themselves in those stories so I'm um, yeah this also, I don't, the thing is, this cover has this, like, glossy thing that I'm just not a huge fan of. The spine is also not my favorite, but those are small things. Yeah, okay. This one, I probably will also read. Okay, so the next one that I'm definitely going to read this month, I have been waiting to read it, and it was been waiting for December when I have a bit of a mental break, is The Son of Wraith and Ruin. I've heard such great things about this book. The cover is beautiful. Um, it's just it's just gorgeous and I'm just I, I actually thought I was gonna wait until Christmas week to read this because I wanted something that I was just gonna be really juicy take my mind off everything something that I could immerse myself in but now I'm also thinking I should probably read Christmas books during Christmas week because I have a whole my Netflix lineup I have been holding off on reading on watching all the cheesy Christmas movies that just came out in the last week or so on Netflix because or last last two weeks actually because I wanted to schedule them all for that like Christmas time that week like maybe from the 23rd to like the 25th but we'll see but anyway A Song of Wraith and Ruin it's really really beautiful um it's another fantasy book that I'm black fantasy that I'm very excited to read um okay oh and then the the second last or the last really um is the pride of noon lay which i just got from by shanice and i got sent this by, by mujaji it's a collection of short stories african fantasy short stories shanice is a zimbabwean writer it's a brand new book um this is one of those books that i also think i'm going to just take slowly over the month and do bits by bit by bit god english bit by bit and then hopefully I'll be able to get through it but in terms of the three short story or the two short story collections that I've spoken about I am probably going to prioritize Joburg Noir and then when I'm done with Joburg Noir I'll, I'll I'll switch to this one right then last but certainly not least this is like not necessarily a book a book in the book sense but it's something that I thought you guys might be interested in so I just got the Makoti's Guide the Lazy Makoti's Guide to the Kitchen which is a cookbook by South African um Mokhao Sashwane um it's basically like your lazy girl's guide to cooking like traditional and like wholesome and like just like bomb food I am going to be working my way through this book in December because you know what if you black girls y'all know 
African girls, y'all know. December. So many things need to be cooked for. Parents are inviting people over all the time. And even if like now with COVID, you're not having as many people over. My, your parents want Sunday lunch. They want seven colors all the time, especially during the festive. So this is what I'm going to be relying on this month. Like there's a couple of things in here that I'm already looking forward to cooking. I have, here's a fact I've never made. I'm a queen. Yeah? I've also never made umusho because I don't know how, but it's in this cookbook. So I'm hoping this, that like Mukha was going to give me like the guide she's gonna, she's gonna plug me on how exactly to get this done um oh roast veg crisps oh my dad is gonna like this yeah i actually make my dad like some healthy crisps i also have never made chakalaka to be honest with you but it's also because i don't like chakalaka so that's not that's not wild but yeah i'm actually gonna definitely i'll pay attention on my instagram i'll probably do a live where i at least I'm a queen, yeah, or umush, or one of the two, because my mom has been on me to learn how to cook all of these things. So I'm hoping what I was going to make this easier because, you know, my mom doesn't give proper instructions. My mom is just like, Zamisa Apa. She's just be like, and I'm just like, babe, I need measurements. Write it down. My mom doesn't write anything down because they cook by like the feeling of the universe. That's how black moms cook. They cook from the heavens. So I can't do that. So yeah. I'm also going to probably be doing a giveaway of this book, probably. So keep your eye out. Stay woke. Don't sleep because then you will miss it. Um, yeah, so that's, I just wanted to show you guys this. This is what I'm going to be relying on most of December. So yeah, that's the end of this video of my, of my December possibility pile um, featuring, it's called Mac Royale, by the way, this lipstick from Mac. Um, yeah, so that's all of the books that I'm planning or thinking of reading um, next month or this month rather. That's the end of it. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you are gearing up for the last stretch of 2020, which has been a monster of a year. Um, and I look forward to reading your guys' comments and engaging with you further. Bye guys. Enjoy your day.